Right, welcome to the second Middle VR Unity tutorial video. Uh, in this video we are starting off with a basic scene in Unity. As you can see, pan round, we can zoom in. But we've got a couple of objects here. Now, I always try and keep my Unity hierarchy in project folders as logical as possible. So as you can see in the project folder, we've got a lot of subfolders including one for scenes, one for scripts, one for plugins, materials, etc. In the hierarchy again, geometry, if you select it, it selects all objects and then you can see the base plane and the various different objects within that. Now these have all been very basic diffuse um, renderers. Uh, what we've done is we've put in a directional light to give ambient lighting and then different coloured point lights as you can see the different lights above each object. Um, so this is our very basic scene as we've also got we've got our basic camera now if we were to hit play as we'd expect we just get the single view with everything now what we're going to do is we're going to import middle VR into this scene uh, but before we do that we need to create something for the middle VR to grab onto so I'm going to create an empty game object you can see here if you hit F2 you can rename or click on it a number of times we're going to call this MVR Locator um, and this is going to be used as you can see when we click on it it's not coming at the origin I'm going to just stick it straight back on 000, zero. the reason I've done that and the reason I've got an empty uh, empty game object is because when we import middle VR we're going to want to be able to tell it where to start so that's what this is for now what we can do is we can go assets import package custom package at which point we navigate the hard drive of the cave computer to our wonderful middle VR folder uh, we go to the data folder and then we're importing this middle VR underscore 4.0 4.1 because it's the latest version and what this is going to do you see it brings up the import package we've got all the different packages in here that it's going to import we're going to import the whole lot and just hit import so you can see Unity is now going to bring in scripts and compile a couple of things and what we end up with here in our project folder is a middle VR folder. Now if we, were expand, if we were to expand this middle VR folder we'll see this VR manager down here. This blue cube means it's a prefab in Unity Talk and this clicking on this brings up the inspector for it with all of the settings. All we're going to do and well all you're going to do when it comes to actually demoing in the cave you're going to compile your program, make sure it's working on a computer because what we're going to do is we're going to replace this main camera with this VR manager. So we're going to literally just drag and drop this straight into our hierarchy. Now you can see it's come in 000 but if you have a look it does jump a little bit. Now depending on the scale of your simulation that can be a massive amount. This is why we've got the MVR locator. So with the VR manager selected what we can do we can drag click and drag this MVR locator into the root node or we can click on this button to locate it so root node is now MVR locator that means when it starts it will link the root node to the MVR locator we can also take this main camera as a template and drag and drop that into our template here now going down we've got show wand um, you can see it just about here this will make more sense when we actually run the program show frames per second very useful Disable existing cameras, we need to have that ticked, otherwise we would still have our main camera rendering and it looked very strange. Grab existing nodes, we'll come back to later in the video, quite an important one this one. Uh, debug nodes, debug screens, again you can leave these unchecked. Quit on escape with a tick, very useful, it means when, you want to f when you're finished with your cave simulation, you hit the escape key and it exits out. Um, don't change window, again unticked. Simple cluster. Now you can untick this because we're running off a single computer, we're not running off a cluster. We don't need this on. And force quality in three, that's fine, that can be left as default. Now we can hit reapply VR player settings, and that's all fine. But we've missed something this config file. Currently it's blank, there's nothing in there, it's this config VRX. So what we will do when you come to doing this on the cave computer is you hit pick configuration file. In the C drive, we've got this folder called Cave MVR Files. 
and you've got two options. You've got Cave Config V5, which is the stereoscopic quad buffered four screened cave simulation, the one we were looking at in the previous video. We've got also no OpenGL, which is useful if you're using 3D textures that require DirectX rendering instead of OpenGL. So in this case, we're going to select the V5, it should pop up in here. We hit reapply player settings, at which point we come back and check it. There we are, it's the correct config file. Now, that's all well and good. That will now mean that if we hit play, rather than getting one camera, we get multiple. So what we've got here on this screen here, this is the left hand screen of the cave. This is the rear screen of the cave. This is the right hand screen of the cave and this is the floor. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up the 3D tracked head glasses, as you can see, moves in real time, and you can see this wand as well on the right hand screen. For some reason it's on the right hand screen, it's not picked up onto the left for some reason, it's just a bit stuck. So what we can do however with the wand is to navigate around the environment. And this allows us, ah there we go, the wand has come back. So now you can see tracking in real time. Wherever I point the wand is wherever we go. I can also rotate the view. I can go up, I can go down, all of this with the wand. As you can see we just disappeared under the plane there. Now, not very useful as far as interactions go because we can go through objects. This is where you want to add an object collider. But where do we go next? Well, what we can do is if we come back to our main screen, I'm going to load exactly the same project um, as we've already got here, but we're going to use the grab nodes function. So if I just open this scene, what we've now got, we've got our MVR locator as before, the VR manager with correct configuration files with the settings all taken off. This time we're going to disable show wand. And the reason for that is we're going to create our own wand. So. As I said, we'll go and come back to this one. This is grab existing nodes. We're going to tick this. Now, when we're running our VR manager, we get a couple of extra options. So if I come back to the VR imported version and run this, but I'll take maximize off. When I run this, what you'll see is the display, but rather than VR manager having hierarchy on it, now the MVR locator, which we'd stuck in to locate you see we get all these funky lines, I'll explain what this means. If we expand this up we get our VR root node, now hopefully this will look similar uh, to what you've seen before. We've then got centre node. Now, you should have noticed that this is the same hierarchy as we found in middle VR. So we've got our hand node and we've got our head node. Now the hand node there, if I was to pick it up and shake it around a bit, you can see it's now updating in real time, which is useful. And our head node, this one here, you can see the cameras. So if we zoom out on the view of it, you can see the three cameras and the floor camera here. So if I was to pick up the head node, you can now see it operating and moving in real time. Now the big camera is the camera that we already tied to it, the main camera. Um, we don't need to worry about that, but you can see the other screens, what we're needing and where we're getting the cameras from. So, if we go to our grab nodes simulation, exactly the same thing. Only difference is now I've added in this game object here, MVR nodes. If we expand this, you can see I've got two nodes in here, a center node and a hand node. So if we come to the center node, it's as simple as a sphere with a diffuse black or dark texture to it. If I just hide this, you can then see the hand node. The hand node, well, you can also see the wand. The hand node is inside this wand. It is a red block, as you can see. It's hidden inside this wand. Now, this is one of the middle VR prefabs. So remember, in the VR manager, we've turned wand off. Now, it doesn't turn it off in this instance here, but when we're running, it disables the wand. So, we've got our hand node, we've got our center node make sure they're both enabled. Now bear in mind your spelling and your capitalization on both of these is important. Now the reason for this, if we are now to run this, because in the VR manager we've got grab existing nodes, it's looking for nodes within our hierarchy with those names already. 
So if we click play this time, you can see our MVR locator, the nodes, center node and hand node have disappeared out of the MVR nodes, but we can see them both here, which is excellent. So if I now go and maximize this play, what you can see, bring the camera up, is underneath us we've got this blob, as expected, this sphere with dark diffuse covering, but we've also got this, which is our hand map. Now this means we can start doing funky things. Now again, we can move around, we can come up to objects, and we can go and put the hand node through them, so we can bring it out the top, put it back in, um, but you can also see down below the sphere of the centre node intersecting the boxes. So if you want to put a box collider or a capsule collider, you can add it to the centre node and then anything you bump into will automatically recognise as a collision. So, useful. Now coming back to our view here, what can we do with this? Well, at the moment nothing, but because we know that the hand node is going to be held in the user's hand, and the centre node is where the environment orientates itself around, we know that we can take this centre node and use it for colliders, which would allow us to bump into objects if they had uh, rigid body physics on them. And this hand node, we can then use, again, a collider to act as a trigger, which will then trigger events. So let's have a look at the next step. So again, exactly the same project, exactly the same as last time. We've got our hierarchy, we've got our nodes, but what we've done here is on the MVR nodes, we've added a script. Now, to do this, all I did, very simply, game object, sorry, assets, create C-sharp script. Now, this C-sharp script we created, come up in here, new behavior script. You can call this whatever you want, script two, for example. Now, to keep things nice and neat, I keep a scripts folder, and you can see this MVR interact script that I've written before. So when you create a new script, you get a blank script, not a lot in it. You've got your start and your update. Now, in the case of our MVR node, we've added a script by going to add component, scripts, and then selecting it from the list. The reason we've done this is because our MVR interact allows us to actually link into our tracker and our hand wands buttons. So if I drag over the scripts itself, you can see here is the mono environment. We've got the standard Unity systems collections. What we've added is this line here using middle VR underscore Unity 3D. By adding this line in, it will access the middle VR plugins and start, we can start doing interesting things. So what I've done, first off, I've created a public game object called hand node. Remember, spelling, uh, it's a strongly typed language, so you need to make sure that your spelling and uppercase, lowercase is correct. So in this case, when we initialize, we've got hand node is equal to a game object dot find and hand node. So it's going to go into our Unity hierarchy and it's going to find hand node and tie it to this variable. Now, our update function, this is running every time, every single frame. Problem is, this can get quite clunky, especially if you're trying to do everything in the update function. So what I've done, I've created this middle VR test program, just pull out the subroutine, uh, means that we can just loop through and structure our, uh, structure our code a bit better. So the first things first, let's create some different objects and just set them to null. So we've got VR tracker called tracker, VR joystick called joy, VR axis called axis, and VR buttons called buttons. Now, what we do, first off, call an if statement. This tells us and returns all of the information from middle VR. So it's checking to see if it's not equal to null, it means we have a VR manager. It then goes and grabs the tracker, the joystick, the VRPN axis and the VRPN buttons, so links them all to these existing things that we created earlier. Now, with this, we can start doing interesting things. For example, getting the tracker's information and logging it if we so wish, or we can doubtless put this to screen, we can get this to drive uh, scripts or text. Um, we've also got the ability to test joystick buttons. 
axes values. So find out what axis are we currently on and what its angle is. But then this is the bit that's going to be of most interest to you. Testing of button state. If buttons is not equal to null, it returns the fact that we have some buttons and we can do some other things. Now, in this case, if buttons dot is toggled zero, and is toggled means has it been pressed, index of zero, so this is button labeled number zero. In this case, button labeled zero on the wand is the yellow button. We've also got a logical or input key down code F1. Now, this is important. If for any reason the VR devices break before your demonstration or during your demonstration, all of your subroutines are doubled up on keyboard shortcuts so you can at least trigger and show what you were doing. So in this case, F1 is the same as pressing the yellow button on the joystick. Now in this case, we're gonna log the fact that button zero is pressed, hurrah, but we're also going to then pull up the hand node, which we looked for earlier. So as we said, hand node is a find game object called hand node. We can then come in and access its renderer, its material, its color, and we're gonna set the color to yellow. So we're gonna match the hand node's color to the button color. So in this case, button zero is the yellow button, we're gonna set it to yellow. Button one is red, we're gonna set it to red. Button two is green. Button three is blue. Button four, which is also the joystick, so if you push the joystick down, that changes it to scion, which is button four. And also button five, this is the trigger. So if you're doing a first person shooter, you might want to use this one. Trigger is the purple, uh, it will turn the color purple. Now you don't need to have this log, all you really need to have is your interaction. Now whether this sets a boolean value to true, so a script happens, or whether you call an animation is up to you, but this is all put together at the same time, so it makes it nice and easy. So what you do, you save your code, come back to your object hierarchy. Now I do it just so I know where it always is. On the VR MVR nodes, I've attached the MVR interact script. And what this will allow me to do, if I hit play this time, is then interact with the objects. So in this case, you can see my wand out in front of me. And if I press the buttons, it changes the color of the wand. But that's if I'm pressing buttons. Now because we are clever about this, we did it so it makes sense, we also made it so that we could then press any of the function keys and also change the colors. And this is because then it doubles up if there's a problem, we don't have any issues. So, that is linking middle VR to Unity. Uh, in a nutshell, to work with the current cave configuration, and that will keep you on straight and narrow. If you've got any problems, come back, reread the code, try and understand what it's doing. If you find that it's complaining uh, that it can't find the MVR plugin, try sticking it into a try or a catch loop. Uh, especially if you're well doing this under C sharp because then it will try if it fails it will fall over gracefully it won't just crash out so hopefully that made sense and uh, good luck <laughs>